Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here or you've been here before but haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Along with hitting that thumbs up button for me and sharing the video, very important if you could share it with other Knicks fans who aren't aware of this channel, that would be great. Also hit the thumbs up button for me and drop your comments. Love the comments, uh, they really help me a lot, like I always say, and they really do. All right, man, guys, ladies, everybody, fans, this is <laughs> we are in an incredible period right now. The New York Knicks just completed their 80th game of the 2023-24 season. They are now firmly in third place. They just went up to Boston and beat the living daylights out of them. So much so, Boston waved the flag before the end of the third quarter. That's right. The Knicks lit them up for 100 points in three quarters. The rest was just gravy. The, so the final score doesn't even show the real result. Look, 118 to 109. Uh, the bench units, uh, you know, the South bench unit caught fire. The Knicks started making mistakes. They, they took their foot off the gas totally, and that's what the final score ended up like that. But the Nick, uh, the team was, <laughs> the score was the the game was a blowout. <clears throat> the game was a blowout. Let's get to it. I got highlights for you. Got a highlights, uh, and here we get into it. 118 to 109. Jalen Brunson once again. <laughs> Unbelievable what he's doing. I'm going to get into talking about that, but let's go to this. Alan Hahn tweeted this out in the span of five days. The Knicks beat the top two teams in the East, Milwaukee and Boston, on each of their respective home courts. Now, you could say, all right, Boston didn't have much to play for. They're the automatic number one, they're the overall number one seed. But, you know, I mean, Tatum, Brown, Horford, uh, Christos Porzingis, all those guys were listed as questionable and possibly out uh, as of yesterday. Well, they were all suddenly available and they all played. It was a game. It was there on their home court. This game could have been a competitive game. It didn't have to be. But the, one of the main reasons is because that man is now completely unstoppable. Completely unstoppable. But let's look at the standings right here. Uh Milwaukee has 49 wins. The Knicks have 48. There's two games left. If Milwaukee splits and the Knicks win the last two, we do end up in third anyway. <laughs> because we need Milwaukee to lose the next two games. So that's the key here. If Milwaukee loses the next two games and the Knicks win the next two games, the Knicks end up in second seed. But the most likely scenario, though, Giannis is out for the remainder of this season. Uh, I'm sure he'll be back for the playoffs. They're just going to rest him. They're not going to risk anything. I forgot the injury. I forgot what the injury was, but he is out for the rest of the season. So it's not a given. They'll even win at least one of the two games remaining. So keep an eye on that. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers are right behind the Knicks with 47 wins. Now, here's one scenario. If all three, Milwaukee, Knicks, and Cleveland, somehow end up tied... So that would mean, actually, that would mean, let's say, uh, the Knicks lose. Well, the Knicks, okay, here it is. Milwaukee loses their next two. The Knicks split their next two, their last two. And Cleveland wins their last two. So they all end up with 49 wins. Then that means Cleveland ends up the second seed. And Milwaukee ends up the third seed because they get the tiebreaker. Because in a three-way tie, division leaders get the tiebreaker lame i think it's ridiculous stupid uh, kind of decision but whatever uh and the knicks would end up in, in the fourth seed however right now it's looking most likely like the knicks will end up in third and as you see below i mean there's orlando right there there's indiana uh the sixers so that means the knicks would end up playing indiana most likely if all things stayed the same as they are right now but there is no guarantee of that as you know there are still two games left for every team uh, let's check in right now on how it's going. Actually, there really is no other team in the East uh, playing right now. Well, uh, the Bulls ended up winning tonight. They pummeled uh, the Pistons, but that's their the ninth seed right now. Uh, let's see. So tomorrow, on Friday, the Knicks do play tomorrow. It's a back-to-back uh, -back, uh, games. They, they go back home, and they play the Nets. We should be able to take care of business there. Uh, Raptors play the Heat. Uh Let's see, Magic play the Sixers. That's a big game. Interesting, interesting game. The Sixers, the Sixers are trying to climb up 
the charts. So let's say, uh, I mean, the Sixers, I could see them beating them. I could see the Sixers beating the Magic, uh, and then they will be tied. They will be tied in the standings. Uh, then there is the Pacers and Cavaliers are facing each other. So one of those two is going to get a loss. They're going to get a loss. Uh, and it could be the Cavs, for all we know. And uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Who's left here? Uh, da, da. Oh, the Bucks. The Bucks play OKC. Hmm, they're in OKC. Okay, interesting. But And without Giannis, that's going to be a tough game for them to win. But their final game of the season is the Bucks in Orlando on Sunday. So the Knicks are sitting pretty. And this is what it looks like. The playoff picture right here. The New York Knicks would be the home team in that first round matchup against the Pacers. Bring on the Pacers. Honestly, the only team right now that I would not want to see in the first round would be the Sixers. That's the only team right now. They got Embiid back. They feel emboldened. Uh, they've been winning out. Let's see. what They're kind of on a little bit of a win streak right now, I believe, or at least they were. Uh, let's see. They are – the Sixers are seven. They've won seven out of their last ten games, and they've won six in a row. So they are hot. They're the hottest team right now in the East and because they, they have a lot to play for, they had a lot of ground to make up for. While Embiid was out, they slid down the uh, standings. So there's someone to watch out for. But you know what? At this point, we got to play them all. The one team we didn't want to see in the in the first round or even the second round was the Celtics. And if the Knicks get that third seed, they will guarantee themselves that they will face. They, they won't. They will not have to face Boston until the Eastern Conference Finals. And I'll tell you, if the way Bojan Bogdanovic played tonight and has been playing of late if that is any indication of what we might see in the playoffs we this team is going to get through those first two rounds of the playoffs wow i can't believe i'm saying that actually i can't believe i'm saying that <laughs> i've been a big champion of this team i believe in this team wholeheartedly what they have done this year is truly phenomenal considering all the injuries the key devastating injuries julius randall gone for the rest of the season o og ananobi elbow surgery mitch robinson who still doesn't look quite right he's still kind of lumbering around his timing is off he doesn't have that vertical explosion you know he needs these games to get back into conditioning so all all of that factored in and this team is right now the number three team in the east that is an outstanding achievement and most of it goes toward because of this guy, Jalen Brunson, right there. And Josh Hart. Josh Hart, uh, shout out to Stat Muse for tweeting this out. Josh Hart today, uh, 16 points, 16 rebounds. Seventh 15 rebound game of the season. And he's six foot four. Outstanding. The best six foot four and under rebounder in the NBA. But back to Bojan. Bojan of late. This is what he's been doing. So the last three games. Uh, he's given us 14 points against the Celtics, uh, 15 points against Milwaukee, and 12 points against the Kings. So the three, they've also, in between there was the Bulls, which, uh, you know, he had nine points uh, in the loss to the Bulls and only three points uh, the other night against the Bulls when the Knicks uh, got their revenge. That was, his, that was, I would say, his one somewhat subpar game in this period. Uh, but he's starting to figure out how he can contribute to winning on this team and we desperately need that from him because you know we're missing uh, Julius Randle and Precious Achua has been struggling offensively as of late so this is a nice sign to see that Bojan Bogdanovic who has been a career starter and who was averaging 20 points a game as a starter for the uh, for the Detroit Pistons before he was traded to the Knicks you know he kind of like lost his feel for the game didn't understand uh you know where to be on the floor, all of that is starting to work itself out, and he's finishing at the hoop. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm talking about Bojan while showing Josh, Josh Hart here. Uh, but this man, this is the reason. Another thirty, another plus 35-point game for him. 39 points, four assists in three quarters. Three quarters he did this. <laughs> that is just Freaky, freaky stuff, guys. In three quarters. This is what he did in three quarters. Shot 15 of 23, 65.2%. 6 of 11 from the three-point line. 39 points, a plus 28. 
for Mr. Jalen Brunson. But he wasn't the only one with, with a plus 20. OG Ananobi, a plus 20. Isaiah Hartenstein, a plus 20. By by the end of the third quarter, we're talking about. by the, This is by the end of the third quarter. Here we go. Over the last five games, Jalen Brunson, shout out to Hoop Central for tweeting this out. 39-2-4, uh, 45, 3-8, 43-6-8, 35-6-11, 35-2-11. Look at those beautiful numbers. Those are sexy, sexy, deep run into the postseason type numbers. The man is unstoppable. And Fred Katz tweeted this out. Uh, he picked up uh, DJ Ace NBA's tweet uh, where he said, Jalen Brunson has seen the entire span of possible coverages over the past several months and has smoked all of them. Boom. Fred said, writing on this tonight, he basically saw everything from Boston tonight. Different defenders, different coverages, smalls guarding bigs just so Boston could switch pick and rolls. Still went for 39 points on 15 of 23. Okay. This is why I'm I'm saying there is no ceiling on this team. This team can beat the Celtics in seven games. It can do it. And let me tell you, <laughs> there's a very good chance they will. The Celtics do not look like they have that fire right now. They can recapture it. They can recapture it. But the way this team is cooking right now, they have an unstoppable player. And now we have OG Ananobi back who can stifle Jason Tatum. And we got Josh Hart, who can, you know, annoy Jalen Brown. So really, they have to depend on Chris Stapps and the others. Chris Stapps, of course, is a tremendous difficult matchup for us when he's cooking. But I got, you know, Mitch by then will have had two, uh, two playoff series, playoff rounds under his belt to get that better conditioning because he is struggling out on the perimeter, which is where he'll have to deal with uh, KP on the offense when KP's on offense. I still like it, even without Randall. I, I actually thought without Randall, we don't have a chance of doing much. I am changing that opinion based upon this man's, based upon the NBA's inability to stop this man. And it's not just because he's putting points up. His efficiency is insane. 65% he shot tonight, 65% and they were trying to stop him. That's what I'm talking about. We got a special team here, guys. This is a great season. This could become the best postseason we've had since 1999-2000. Yes, let's go. All right, here are the uh, stats. Before we move on to that, let's get to the highlights. Here we go. That was the first score of the game. Kind of at that moment, I was thinking, oh, no, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I always have this, like, kind of doom and gloom feeling when we play against the Celtics if we don't come out sharp right away that they'll just smoke us uh, knock us off the court but it was not to happen the New York Knicks uh, they hit uh, uh, they, they contributed 32 points today again but the Celtics were right there with 29 so we were a plus three but the Knicks shot 53.6 percent and the Celtics shot almost 58 percent in that first quarter however the Knicks had an additional nine field goal attempts and that trend kept going on by the halftime the Knicks had 21 additional field goal attempts than the Celtics that's just pure hustle that's second chance opportunities that is the Thibodeau style of play a lot of that is Josh Hart but that style of play is emanating throughout the entire lineup beautiful here we go uh Tatum a uh, uh, nice little play the break it up there but Tatum did pick it up I those are always the frustrating ones when a great defensive play ends up still ends up in a score for the uh the team but look at this Josh Hart he connected on some threes tonight uh he was for the game wait oh he didn't get accredited there interesting they're only they're only giving him one of four from the three-point line I could swear he shot better than that that is bizarre. All right. That is what it is. OG Ananobi, 12 points for him. He played 20, 26 minutes. He was 5 of 10, 50%, 2 of 3 from the three-point line, 5 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 steal, 1 block, only 1 turnover, finished a plus 20. Josh Hart, 5 assists, 1 steal, 16 points, a plus 18 for him. 
and Dante DiVincenzo. You can never let, leave him out of a, a conversation about the Knicks. He played the most minutes tonight, 41 minutes. He shot 7 of 15, 46.7%, 3 of 7 from the three-point line. That's almost 43%. Uh, four assists, one steal for him, 17 points for Dante DiVincenzo. Beautiful. Uh, the Knicks uh, ended up with 24 assists tonight. Not that high, considering they ended up uh, for the game only shooting uh, only. I was about to say only shooting 49 and a half percent. I was like just shy of 50 percent and almost 39 percent overall. But that was they had a rocky fourth quarter because before that, the Knicks before the if you remove the fourth quarter, the Knicks shot a crazy 50 percent overall for the game. 41 for 82, 40 percent from the three point line. They did miss some free throws. They didn't go. They only went to the free throw stri uh, charity stripe 10 times tonight. But only connected on six of them, so that ain't good. Uh, that wow! By three quarters, the Knicks were destroying the Celtics on the boards, forty-six to twenty-six. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's see here. For the game, Knicks ended up with fifty-two rebounds. The Celtics with thirty-six. I do think the rebounding is going to continue to be a problem for the Boston Celtics when they do play the Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals. Uh, they, you know, the Knicks are just a hungry team. They're they're one of the best rebounding teams in the game. And now we got OG back. We got uh, Mitch back. Also two very good rebounders. Well, Mitch is a great rebounder. And if his conditioning starts clicking in, which I'm expecting it will, and, I, and I'm saying that because when I look at Tom Thibodeau on the sidelines, when they cut to him, or sometimes I just kind of get up to the screen and I, and I look at his reactions. When I see his reactions to when Mitch isn't able to get to you know, a, a loose ball the way he normally would or where he just makes a mistake or he mistimes a jump or his putback isn't quite right. You know, I I don't see frustration on Thibs's face. I see patience. He knows he his feeling is Mitch will eventually get to where he needs to be. So that's a good sign. That That is the indication to me that we shouldn't worry about uh, Mitchell Robinson right now. All right, so there you go. Through uh, three quarters, and the third quarter was a thing of beauty for the Knicks. They were the Knicks were already up in the first half by 21, and in that third quarter, they came out and just destroyed them, shooting four of ten from the three-point line, 50% overall, uh, 14 rebounds, uh, 31 points. Uh, to Boston's 23. So by the end of that uh, third quarter, they were up, uh, what were they up, like 30? They were up 30, uh, 29 points. They were up 29 points by the end of the third quarter. And that's when uh, Missoula just threw in the flag. Look at that. Look at that. Six of 11 from Mr. Brunson from the three-point line. Woo! There we go. It's probably one of the few highlights for Boston in that third quarter. Let's see what happens here. A uh, nice little play. Got snuck in, slipped by uh, Brunson. Let's see here. Look at Brunson. Oh. Miss, but look, Mitch, look at that. Nice to see that. That's, and he hit the uh, the free throw. So he, he finished the end one right there. Nice job for Mitch. Uh, Mitch uh, played uh, about 15 minutes. He was two of three overall, five points. He was a plus seven. He did get a steal, but only four rebounds for him in 14, uh, 15 minutes. That's a little low, a little low. I'm expecting all of that to improve. But look at this score by the end of this third quarter. The Knicks had scored 100 points on the Boston Celtics in 36 minutes. 100 points in 36 minutes. And Precious Achua finally got in on the action. Uh, though overall, in his 16 minutes, he was only one of six. Uh, Deuce has been struggling with his shot of late. Uh, that was his one bucket that he made. Uh, he was finished uh, one of six himself as well, 0 for 4 from the three-point line. Uh, but he did pick up four assists, got a steal. Uh, I think, like I said in the previous uh, recap, uh, the minutes load has caught up to Mitch. Uh, he has played the most minutes of any player Uh for like a two, like a three week stretch. And, you know, as a guy who barely played at all and suddenly to play the most minutes in the NBA, that's got to impact you. His body's probably just a little tired uh, and that throws off your focus. The beauty is the Knicks are going to have an entire week off after Sunday's final game. They'll have a week off. That'll be enough time because Deuce needs to uh, recover, get his energy back. 
Josh Hart needs to rest that wrist and just rest in general. Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein, we want you know that uh, Achilles ten tendinopathy to be taken care of. Mitch, uh, Mitch is going to need. Uh, I think Mitch should be out there and running a lot. He should be out there and doing some conditioning. Uh, I hope uh, Thibs does run a couple of intense uh, scrimmages, uh, at least for Mitch. Uh, let's see here, Bojan. Uh, well, Bojan's been looking good. Bojan's been looking good. Precious needs to, to get his uh, head together. He looks like a different player than he did uh, about a month ago. I don't know what happened. He could be nursing a slight little injury. We don't know. Uh, sometimes guys, when they get promoted to the starting unit because of injuries, and then uh, the returning players, you know, they get they get well and they come back. And sometimes that does it throws their timing off when they get pushed to the bench. But that shouldn't be an excuse. That's not a valid excuse. All right, we're back to the beginning. Let's get to. The stats. Uh, I've rattled off most of these, uh, but Bojan, as I said, looks six of ten overall, sixty percent, beautiful. Uh, two of six from the three-point line. Uh, sometimes he, his three-point shot looks great. Sometimes it looks like wow, total head scratcher. He misses like almost everything. Uh, but he did finish with fourteen points. Excellent for him. Uh, let's see, seventeen for Dante. For look at that. Uh, the entire starters finished with double figures, and three of them did not play in the fourth quarter <laughs> wild uh the plus minus to see i mentioned before plus uh, 20 for og plus 28 for brunson plus 18 for josh hart oh and here it's a plus 18 over here it's a plus 20 interesting they got to get this stuff together uh boston celtics you can see jason tatum he uh was the high scorer 18 points for them uh this guy hauser Man, he's a dangerous weapon. Uh, 22 minutes. Uh, he was 3 of 5 from the three-point line. 5 of 8 overall, 15 points. Same with Pritchard. 16 points for him. They, uh, Those two are permanent members of their rotate of the Celtics rotation, along with Al Horford. It's going to be interesting to see who is going to be that ninth guy. Is it going to be Cornette or Tillman? That's going to be interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, Drew Holiday had a very insignificant game for him. 29 uh, minutes, uh, just seven points for him. He was uh, he was hurt by Brunson a lot. Brunson put the, the the pain on him, man. And Derek White, look at this. 29 minutes, one of five from the field, over over three from the three point line. Oh man, they, I, I'm not expecting Boston to play like this, obviously in the playoffs, but they do have a tendency to. Uh, you know, I don't. What's the word? Not disappear, but not uh, take the moment seriously. And uh, they have all the talent. They have. They can win it all this season. They could even beat the, the Nuggets or whoever they face in the finals if they get past uh, the Knicks in the Eastern Conference Finals. But there's just something about their chemistry that has me a little bit concerned about that team. Uh, which is why I'm excited about what the Knicks are able to, have been able to do as of late. Uh, we did drop some, you know, games that we shouldn't have lost, uh, but we seem to have recovered from that. And OG feeling better definitely has helped. One thing I got to say, the elbow issues with OG seem to be a thing of the past, and that is fantastic. The timing is perfect for that. Uh, here are the team comparisons. Uh, da, 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 what's of note here? Uh, oh, we won the battle in points in the paint, 56 to 40. It's hard to judge these because a lot of these uh, Celtics uh, numbers are uh, skewed from that fourth quarter, which is mostly bench players where the Knicks basically took their foot off the gas. Uh, but they, you know, the teams, both teams shot uh, over 38%, almost 39% for the Knicks from the three-point line, 38% for uh, Boston. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it of note there. Look at that. This guy, MVP candidate, got to be top five in the voting. I, I get why you would give it to Joker. You know, uh, I have no problem if Joker won it. But truly, I don't think there is one other player in the NBA who deserves a, a, an MVP vote than Jalen Brunson other than Joker. I mean, SGA, of course, he's been fantastic. Uh, totally. Totally. You know, and they're almost kind of similar in ways. If you remove SGA from that uh, uh, Thunder team, I, they're, they're nowhere near, you know, one of the, the number one or two seed in the West. They're nowhere near that. But if you remove Brunson from this team, uh, the Knicks are, like, looking at the lottery. They're, like, uh, you know, saying hello to Detroit and, uh, 
you know, uh, Washington down there in the bottom of the standings, where the o OKC could probably still be running, you know, challenging for a play-in. Well, I don't even think the Knicks would be anywhere near sniffing play-in if they had lost, if Jalen Brunson wasn't on this team for this season. Let's put it that way. So he deserves an MVP nomination. All right, tomorrow, going to be doing a live pregame show with uh, Noah Cahill from Clutch. Uh, clutch basketball, uh, who uh, uh, respect his opinion. He's a young guy. He's going to give us that young vibe. I can't wait. Looking forward to that. Been wanting to get him on the show for a while, even though he didn't know it. <laughs> I, I uh, reached out to him a couple days ago, so we're on board for that. So if you are around, you can join us for the pregame live. Please do so. And, of course, I will be doing a postgame uh, recap as well. And then on Sunday will be the final, final game of this incredible season. And hopefully the Knicks will close it out strong without any injuries, with nothing going wrong, and we secure that third seed. That's I really want that third seed. If we can get the second seed, awesome. But the third seed is what I want. All right, thank you so much for watching this. Again, my name is George. Please follow me on Twitter or Instagram. On, and you know, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe, share this video, hit the thumbs up button for me, and drop your comments. Definitely want to hear your thoughts and feelings about all this good vibes we're having here with the Knicks. It's just a good vibe time. Loving it. Loving it. New York, let's go. All right, I will see you around the Knicks first. Jalen Brunson's a motherfucker. <laughs>